Hello everybody. A while ago I did a video on creating a separate network for my security cameras. During that video I touched on my upgrade to Unify Protect and now that I'm done with the migration I'd like to share with you what I ended up with, the end results, and my thoughts from the first few months of using it. As I mentioned in my initial video, I still really like Blue Iris and have recommended it to many others that are using a variety of different manufacturers' cameras. In my quest to simplify and have less maintenance tasks, I started to slowly switch to Unify Protect over time. Ubiquiti is in a unique position in that they control both the hardware and the software, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. On the negative side, you're locked down to their hardware, such as cameras and VRs, which are arguably a little bit more costly. However, on the positive side, the setup, configuration, and maintenance is one of the easiest and best I've ever used, and the performance exceeded my expectations. As it turned out, the PC I was using for my Blue Iris ended up with a failed SSD, which accelerated my transition faster than I planned, as I didn't want to spend any time and money on something that was ultimately being phased out. So for today's video, I want to go through my hardware selection, why I chose it, and then go through the configuration and results. At the heart of the system is, a, is the NVR, which supports up to four hard drives and automatically configures itself in the proper RAID configuration. Currently, I'm using two 6TB Western Digital RED drives, which are by default configured in a RAID 1 configuration. The NVR will change the RAID configuration as you change the number of drives, so if I add one more drive, it'll convert to a RAID 5 and provide me with up to 12TB of storage, leaving me with one drive of redundancy. Based on how I set up my recordings, the dual 6 terabytes is more than enough for the total number of cameras that I'm currently running. I'll get more into how to configure it and how to save a recording space when we get into the options in the video. The G5 Bullet is a 5 megapixel sensor and has an 84.4 degree of horizontal view. It has a built-in IR and IR cut filter that sports resolutions of up to 2688 by 1512 at a 16 by 9 ratio and a max frame rate of about 30 frames per second. The G5 Dome camera has the same 5 megapixel sensor but with a different view angle of 102.4 degrees horizontal. The rest of the specs are identical to the G5 Bullet. The G5 Flex also has a 5 megapixel megapixel sensor with the same 102.4 horizontal view angle and again has identical specs to the G5 but packaged in a different form factor. The G4 Instant is a small wireless camera which also has a 5 megapixel sensor, 102.4 degree horizontal view and supports a maximum resolution of 2688 by 1512 at a max frame rate of 30 frames per second. The G3 Instant is physically identical to the G4 except that it has a 2 megapixel sensor with a horizontal viewing of 111.3 degrees horizontal. It supports a max resolution of 1920 by 1080 with a max frame rate of 30 frames per second. Lastly is the G3 Flex PoE camera, which is also a 2 megapixel HDR sensor with horizontal view angle of 87 degrees and supports a max resolution of 1920 by 1080 at a max frame rate of 25 frames per second. To drive a couple of the outside cameras, I use the Flex PoE switch, as this device actually gets powered from a PoE source. In other words, you can feed a PoE line connection to it, and it will distribute that PoE signal to the other ports, as well as power itself. If you supply a PoE+, Plus, you'll get 20 watt budget, and if you supply a PoE++, Plus Plus, you'll have a 46 watt budget for the other ports. For me, I powered it on off of a PoE switch that I was already powering that camera and it gave me a 20 watt budget which was more than enough to run a few cameras. To complete the hardware, I also picked up a couple of Unify viewports. These are certainly not required in most applications, but for me I needed the ability to display certain cameras on my TV. So now that we've seen the hardware, let's walk through the configuration and discuss each location as well as my reasoning for why I selected a particular camera, starting with the front of the house. I used two G5 Bullet cameras for this task. One of the main reasons was cost and performance. The G5 Bullet uses a 5 megapixel sensor and sells for around $130, while the G5 Pro 4K 
sells for around $379. Since I needed to buy two of them to cover the driveway and the front of the house, it would have added a lot of extra cost to the system. Though it's always nice to have 4K, for an area this tight, the significant cost wouldn't be justifiable, especially given the excellent performance of the G5. I use the same philosophy for the side of the house where I'm monitoring a small area in two different directions. For the backyard, I used two more G5s to cover the entire backyard. Again, these areas are not huge and plenty detailed to cover an area this size. You could argue that for a backyard this size, 4K would have been better, but I'm perfectly happy with the results. And as you can see, the performance is very good, so it would have been hard to justify the extra cost. On the other side of the house, which is more secluded, I used a single G3 Flex. The main reason is I had it left over from my earlier experiments, and given that there's no traffic in this area, it seemed like a perfect solution. I picked up an outdoor mounting kit and powered it from the PoE Flex switch. The last camera I used for outdoors is the G5 Flex, which was installed in front of the house, facing the main walkway to my house. The G5 Flex is a 5 megapixel camera, which arguably is an overkill for this application, but as it covers the main entrance, I wanted the extra detail and wanted the human detection feature available in the 5 series cameras. As I was replacing some of the wireless cameras in the back with PoE devices, one of the challenges I ran into is I did not have an extra CAT6 cable to run there. So I needed to come up with a way to supply PoE to this camera without running another cable as this area is extremely hard to get to and it would require running a CAT6 all the way around the house through the attic and to a PoE switch. As I had already run one cable to power one of the cameras in the backyard, I opted to use the Unify Flex PoE switch which would allow me to take one PoE cable and not only power the switch, but supply data and power to four additional devices depending on the power supply being used. With standard PoE Plus, it would power the switch and supply up to 20 watts to the other four ports. If you need more power, you can supply PoE Plus Plus and have up to 46 watts of available for the other four ports. This is a really phenomenal little device and it's perfect for this type of application or other applications where you need to limit cable runs. This way I could power both cameras off of a standard PoE source as the cameras only draw about 4 watts each. This would even give me some room if I needed to add more cameras later. It's an incredible device for $99 and it's perfect for any indoor and outdoor applications. I'll be doing a more detailed video on this in the future, so let me know if you're interested. Post your questions in the comments below. Moving on to the indoor cameras, the requirements are much less demanding. Starting with my office, I used the basic G3 Flex and mounted it on one of my network racks just to keep an eye on things. The room isn't very big, so the 2 megapixel HD camera was more than suitable for this task. In the living room, I actually have two cameras. The first is a G3 Flex with a black cover on it so that it blends more into the entertainment center and looks less like a camera. The second is a wireless G4 Instant on the other side of the room, facing the front door as I do not have any type of cabling run to that side of the room. I did put a gray cover on it as covers for the G4s are not available in black. The wireless performance has been stellar with zero dropouts that I used to experience from other manufacturers. The video it captures is smooth and detailed and it's almost every bit as good as a wired camera. Moving to the family room, again I chose the G4 Instant, which I already had from my earlier testing and currently I do not have a PoE switch at that location. I'll be adding a PoE light in the very near future and it'll be possible to change the camera out at that time. In the meantime, this thing works perfectly well and does everything I need it to do. Lastly, for the garage, I installed two cameras, one G3 Flex pointing at the garage door so that I could check on things and make sure that the door was closed, and one G5 Dome pointing at the entrance. The last piece of hardware I want to talk about is the viewport. This is a real niche device that solves one major problem for me, and that's to get a live display of my key cameras without the use of an app or a computer. My goal with these was to incorporate these into my entertainment system and use my universal remote so that I could click one button and display the entire outdoor camera selection. I won't spend a bunch of time on this device, but basically you have a PoE port on one side and an HDMI port on the other. What is outputted on the screen is controlled by the view, 
that you configure within the Protect software, which I'll cover as we get more into the configuration. These are really overpriced devices, not super popular, but if you have a situation where you just need a live display at all times, like most of the Unify devices, they work really, really well. Now that we've gone through the hardware and different models I've selected, let's walk through the Protect interface, settings, and my final configuration. There are a couple different ways that you can log into Unify Protect. One way is to log in through the UI portal, which allows you to access your Protect from anywhere. And the second option is to access it directly with the IP address when you're sitting on your local network or accessing through a VPN. As I'm currently on my local network, I'll use the IP address. Once we're in the console, you're greeted with the home page. Here you can see all of the applications that you have installed, which in my case is just the Protect software, as I'm not using Access or UID. If we go down the left column, we can see the different sections. The admin section is where you can set up multiple users or change the privilege of some users. Looking at the Unified Devices tab, we can see that all the Unified Devices that are on the Protect system, this of course only shows you the Protect devices and not your network devices that you would see from the Unified controller. If we go to the console settings, we can see some of the basic options for the Protect console. You have the NVR name, time zone, and whether or not you want to enable or disable the LED, and the option of restarting or shutting down. Next we have the map section, which I actually haven't set up yet, but if you upload or create a floor plan, it allows you to set up the camera positions. The following section is your system logs. There are logs for critical, updates, admin activity, backups, and push notification setup. Going back to the applications and going to the Protect software, you can see the main screen. On the top, you see the most recent detections, and on the left side, you can see some of the generic information about the NVR, such as the name, the OS version, the NVR storage capacity, and the capacity in days, which in my case is 40 days of continuous recording. Clicking into the next tab, you can see the actual devices, including the name, model number, IP address, and recording mode. If I click on one of the cameras, we can see an overview which gives us the status, firmware version, and other information about the camera. Clicking on the recording mode is where some of the ease and power of Unify start to come in. You can use the default global settings or we can customize this particular device. You can set the record to record always, which is the default, or you can create a custom schedule. You can choose to set continuous recording, which is the default, or record detections only, which can save on recording space if you have very limited storage. You can also set what detections to record for this particular camera, such as motion and smart. Next you have the detection recording settings where you can set the number of seconds needed to trigger a detection, seconds to record before the detection, and seconds to record after the detection. Looking a little further down we can see the recording quality which I've turned all the way up. This camera happens to support 30 frames per second and then below that you have the overlay information which for me is time and camera name only. Below that is where the real power starts. I can actually edit the motion zone to limit when the camera will detect motion as well as adjust the sensitivity. The same process applies to smart detection zones. The only difference is that you can select the detection type, such as people or vehicle, if your camera supports it. The next section is the crossing line, which is effectively the same. This is where you can draw a line across two points and determine what is the trigger zone. Next is the privacy zone, so you can block off an area that the camera will not record. Looking at the example with my office camera, you can see that there is an area that has been blocked off where the desk is as a privacy zone. Going down to the next section is a live view of the cameras. Here you have an option to view all of your cameras or any portion of your cameras. I can change the view or create custom views by going to the bottom of the screen and clicking the live view button. I can select one of the views I've already created, add in a current view or an existing view, or view the default, which is all cameras. For example, if I pick the TV view, which is the one I'm using to output to the viewport devices, it quickly gives me a view of only the outdoor cameras. Going back to playback, I can view anything recorded for each camera as well as the timeline. Clicking on detections shows me all the detections that were recorded. Hovering over a detection scrubs the video and gives you a quick playback of the clip. Moving to insights, you can see a virtual heat map of where it has detected shadows, motions, or any other type of movement. 
This helps you fine tune some of your cameras to, to minimize false triggers and shows you areas where detections are actually taking place. Next is the system log, which shows you all the activities such as critical, admin, motion, and smart detections. The last section is settings. Here I can define the recording retention and set it to auto or custom where I can actually set my own retention days, as well as create any custom schedules. Scrolling down, you can change the global recording settings, such as when to record and the recording mode, and the default detections to record. In addition, below are the default seconds of motion before the trigger, seconds before and after the detection, that will apply to all cameras unless you customize a specific camera. Below that is the default overlay information. Next in the system settings is a list of auto adopt bridges, which by default is a list of your access points. Below that is the default time and temperature formats. This is also where you can download a full configuration file and restore to a new unit or upgrade to a different NVR. Lastly is the notification sections, which you can leave on default or customize them if you choose. I've been using Unify exclusively for months now, and I'm happy to report I have no regrets. It's always expensive and potentially disappointing when you're changing out your security system, so there's always a risk in doing it. I can't say enough about the ease of setup and the ease of use. And if you have a system now, I would consider going this route as the need for upgrade in the future. And if you currently do not have a system and you're looking for one, I would definitely consider this as your foundation. The numerous security concerns of some of the lower end cameras, the difficulty in setup, and the inconsistency of settings and features, as well as the reliance to third party software such as Blue Iris, makes going to Unify a system worth considering. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and feel free to post any questions in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.